Hi, it's Dwyer. It is August 14th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Also, always 1776.com, a free site. Let's give a perspective update. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, first, let me just say, there is a great video. This is the kind of video you want to download and save, right? It's Art Laffer on Kitco, K-I-T-C-O, Kitco News. He's being interviewed by Michelle McCory, right? She's an excellent interviewer. Art Laffer really is a national treasure. Right in the 1980s, he was, of course, one of Ronald Reagan's key economic advisors. Right, according to folklore, he's the one who wrote down on a napkin a graph that became the centerpiece of what at the time was called supply side economics. Right, it's hard to imagine how ferocious the GDP was in the 1980s, especially compared to now, right? Well, what people don't understand is that Art Laffer himself doesn't consider himself to be a Republican or a Democrat. One of his absolute favorite presidents is John F. Kennedy. Understand, when Governor Moonbeam, that's what we called him, Jerry Brown, ran for President of the United States, one of his economic advisors was Art Laffer. This is after the Reagan years. Right now, Art Laffer still believes strongly in free trade, right? A concept that's lost this presidential election right? Free trade. Now, he makes the argument for free trade and he makes the argument for not using the dollar to sanction foreign powers. In other words, Russia invades Ukraine. If Russia has deposits here in the United States, we should not play games with their deposits, especially since we're the world reserve currency. Right? I know that's not politically accepted today. But understand, that's the kind of argument that Art Laffer is making. I urge you to watch this video. I'm going to try to put the link in the description of this video so you can hear Art Laffer in his own words. Right? He also makes the claim, and I see nothing to support this that presidential candidate Donald Trump believes in free trade. Now let's talk about the presidential race. Um, let me just say this. I can't believe how bad it is. On the one hand, you have a candidate, and keep in mind, we're less than 90 days out from election day. You have a candidate who has not revealed her plans for the economy, right? We don't even know if she's free trade. <laughs> That's how ridiculous it is. It's even worse than that. She's avoiding the press. She won't submit to a press conference. She's a mystery and understand, it's really an unprecedented type of mystery because of course, this is that rare situation where you have a party nominee who has locked up the nomination but who did not run as the top of the ticket in any presidential primaries. Then, of course, you have Donald Trump. Let, by the way, I was just talking about Kamala Harris. Right? I don't want to have anyone think I was talking about Jill Stein or any of the others who are running for president. 
Right now, let's talk about Donald Trump. Right, Donald Trump is a mercantilist. In other words, he really believes that he can use tariffs to strengthen the United States, to protect our labor force from world markets. Right, folks? Others have tried this in history. It's bad policy. Let's go one step further. Donald at one point talked about having tariffs replace the income tax system. Now let's be clear, I'm no fan of the income tax system. <laughs> I'm simply not. But wow, you were hoping that Trump would have more imagination and would talk about a consumption tax. Right, we'll talk about some tax system that actually helps encourage people to save, that would give people power over the taxes they pay. No, he's talking about replacing it with tariffs. Right, so folks, understand, there are some years when you have a great debate during an election year or during an election cycle. Understand, John F. Kennedy and Barry Goldwater were good friends. They actually had a plan to have a series of debates, right? A series of debates before the 64 election. Then, of course, Kennedy got assassinated before that could happen. Right now, folks, what we have today pales in comparison. I talk with Democrats on an ongoing basis. They don't know where Kamala Harris stands on several issues, right? She was the border czar. No, she wasn't the border czar, right? She wants a strong border, but there are tapes of her talking about closing border facilities, right? Folks, the president of the United States shouldn't be a personality contest. We should really know the direction that the candidate wants to take the country in. I, I personally don't understand how anyone could run for the presidency of the United States and then think they can hide from the press. Right, folks, it's just downright ridiculous. Right, let's talk about stocks, just where we are in the economy. Now, I know Google lost the big court case, right? Folks did not like, and I consider the logic to be completely silly. Folks did not like the idea of Google being able to pay Apple to have Google search engine be the default search engine on Apple's products, right? Folks, it's ridiculous. If Apple has a choice on its default search engine and is compensated by Google to change their default search engine. I don't understand who gets injured by that, especially since you're not paying for the default search engine, right? Am I supposed to believe that Apple is gonna spend billions of dollars developing an iPhone and then is gonna turn around and trust some unknown company to be the default search engine on Apple's phone. Shouldn't we be applauding Google and Apple, quite frankly, for Apple deciding not to have their own search as their default search, to actually look out in the market and to then say, you know what, our iPhones are a luxury item. We want the best in the business handling our default search that's Google. Let's go with Google and let's also reward our shareholders by getting paid to do so. Well, in any event, Google, which is perfectly positioned for autonomous vehicles, which is perfectly positioned for artificial intelligence, which has my favorite streaming service, YouTube TV, and of course, operates this forum, YouTube, 
right? Google, which is doing several things right, is down today <laughs> by several dollars. People are spooked by the court ruling. There's articles out there that Biden's DOJ is going to try to break up Google right now at a time when, of course, we want the United States to have technological advances. At a time when Donald Trump is on record as saying he wants the United States to be the country that has the most power uh, when it comes to Bitcoin, right? I'm shocked that the United States is <laughs> ludicrous enough to be threatening Google of all companies, a company that gives out free software, right? Uh, with uh, the possibility of anti-monopolistic litigation right folks it's absurd well let me just point out with the advent of ai and you need to view ai not as a separate technology it's just a leap up in computing power right folks the development of ai was gonna gut google's advantage in search in any event right has anyone hopped on any of these AI, you know, chat, GPT, uh, Google Gemini. Has anyone hopped on any of these services, Copilot, and run searches? Folks, they're spectacular. If you understand technology, you understand that Google is already on thin ice in terms of its search part of its business. Right, folks, that's already on thin ice. There are more vibrant parts of Google, like Google Cloud. Right, so the fact that there's some concern over Google's search dominance ignores, quite frankly, the current market. <laughs> ignores what's really going on in the world. Also, you're really going to go after Google when Google has some of the best-funded competitors out there in tech right Amazon meta Microsoft heard of them right so let's just say Google remains a juggernaut I think this is a great time to pick up some Google now let me add a caveat here nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice I'm just telling you what's attractive to me. Let me also make another caveat, too. I have rarely seen a better opportunity to buy a group of assets than you have right now in cryptocurrency. Right? So understand, that's really where my focus is. But, of course, I do dabble in stocks. I need to know what's going on in the stock market. I need to know the hot sectors. I do own my own portfolio, right? So just understand, I'm just telling you what I like. You interpret it as you may, right? I want everyone here watching this video to do their own due diligence. And understand too, because of the poor quality of the presidential race, we aren't even in an era where we can rely on free trade. Think about that. Well, let's talk about trade for a moment. One of my favorite places to shop is Temu. T-E-M-U. Right? You know my belief. I believe we should be trading with China, especially now. Right? The Chinese economy is suffering, folks. It's suffering, the extent of which we really don't fully know. Because China is a top-down economy, right? The government, quite a bit different than here in the United States. The information, of course, isn't as reliable as market-based information. right? But just understand, we should be trading with China right now. You do when you buy goods from Timu. The company is PDD. I believe it's worth a look. 
The company is doing very well. Understand, Timu is really a revelation in terms of being, we'll call it a slightly different Amazon, right? Let me also point out too that oil and gas for people who haven't been paying attention have been going well. If you've owned Exxon, XOM, a long time holding of mine, uh, you've done well for yourself. And of course, Exxon has something like a 20 year record of delivering on dividends, right? So you're not just dealing with upside stock appreciation, you're also dealing with dividends. Let me just say the Permium uh, Resources is also a play I like. Right. Take a look at oil and gas. Let me also say, too, that I believe certain things are going to crash right now. Uh, don't fall for the uh, public opiate that the Fed's throwing out there. Right. The Fed likely is going to cut rates. Whoop de doo. Right. Whoop de doo. What you want to do is realize that we're bad off. Right. We are bad off and um, shrewd companies with huge cash balances who've been liquidating positions in Bank of America, for example. Um, you know, I'm talking about Berkshire Hathaway. That's a stock that interests me right now because it's the people who have huge cash reserves and Berkshire's at record levels for that company. Huge cash reserves that can walk in and just start buying up assets left and right. Right When the housing market completely collapses, and I encourage people to look up here online, people like Reventure Consulting's Nick Gurley, uh, Sachs, spelled S-A-C-H-S, -S, Realty, Right. These are people deep into real estate and look up their YouTube videos. You'll find that uh, multiples are coming down in some states for different reasons. Right. In Florida, if you're in an area that tends to flood, given the recent storm season, you're looking at your premiums skyrocketing. Right. When real estate collapses, understand companies like Berkshire Hathaway are extremely well positioned to step in and buy such assets, right? Let me point out too, you saw that Starbucks recently jumped something like 20% in a day because they got Chipotle CEO. Just understand, you know, with that kind of volatility, with that kind of market uncertainty, you're going to have quality companies that haven't jumped 20% but that could with the right management. And you're gonna have Berkshire Hathaway with the ability to come in and buy them and then to profit from the jump and to be in a position given Buffett's investment strategy to profit long-term from a business that can be successful with the right management, right? So let me just say, I like Google, even now that it's unpopular. I like Amazon, right, folks? Amazon is deep in artificial intelligence. Look at Anthropic, which Amazon owns a big portion of. I like Meta. Look at what Meta is doing in AI, and they're giving away their technology for free, right? I believe AI is real. I know there are pundits out there talking about how these businesses haven't yet seen uh, additions to their bottom line. Let me just tell you, Tom Cruise was at the end of the Olympics, right? And he, of course, was part of the presentation to let you know that 2028 was going to be happening in Los Angeles, right? Folks, by the time we get to 2028, Given the leaps in AI, you're going to have to ask the question on whether the commentators at these events are actually human. 
right, folks? You know, um, on websites I follow, like Benzinga, they actually have machine-written, computer-written stories that an editor will just go over to make sure that it flows. And then they'll release them, and in the story they'll tell you that this story was written by some computer system. Right, folks? AI is increasing in efficiency to such an extent that just like every, almost every small business you know has internet access, has the ability to be reached by email now, right? Has chat windows where rather than wait on the phone, you can go type in your query and the computer system will answer most of your questions. Folks, by 2028, mark these words, you're going to have setups where they'll be able to take a celebrity, let's say Tom Cruise, and in a computer recreation of Tom's voice, right, have him commenting on things at the Olympic Games. NBC supposedly had such a contract with Al Michaels this go-round, but then Al decided to actually travel to Paris to be seen with Bob Costas at some situation. But understand, if a celebrity has a contract with the outfit that is televising the Olympic Games, right? the Olympics wouldn't need Snoop at the Olympics. The Olympics could have taken a virtual Snoop, with Snoop's permission, of course, right? The artist would say, use my likeness, use my voice, right? And they could have had Snoop Dogg commenting on whatever they wanted, right? That's the power of AI. Now, not every AI company is going to make it. But let's stop kidding ourselves. The fact that Google lost some case in terms of uh, paying players to be their default search engine on phones, doesn't decrease Google's success in the AI space. Folks, that's a big moat, right? So these companies, which are diversified, right? Google's, as if AI is not big enough, Google, of course, is on the inside track when it comes to autonomous vehicles and Waymo, right? Just to understand when you see a downturn now, you need to hop in the water. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I like Google. I like Amazon. I like Meta. I like Berkshire Hathaway. I like uh, Exxon. I like PDD Holdings. I like Permium Resources. PR is the symbol there. Um, tell us what you like in the comment section of this YouTube video. Remember, I want everyone here to do their own due diligence. What I've said here is not financial advice. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for stopping by.